Hi everybody, it's Vanessa. I wanted to film my 2017 stats and break down what all the little charts said that I did this year reading wise. I wanted to also compare it a little bit to how I did in 2016 and I actually started like writing down all these things and then I realized that I was having reactions and I thought that it would be more fun to just discover it on camera. I think first I'll go a little bit through the goals and then you'll see how that is connected to the statistics. For my 2017 goals I'm gonna go really quickly because who cares about 2017 goals at this point and how I did because we all know that I probably didn't do that well. So my first goal that I set for myself last year was to stumble on books at the library. I definitely did that and I will continue to do that because it's so much fun. Number two was to reread a book and yes I did that. I reread The K in the summertime and honestly it didn't go well. <laughs> it really took away the magic of what I remember that book being like in middle school. I also started rereading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone but I haven't finished that yet so uh, that might go a little bit better than The K did. Number three was to read more poetry and short stories and yes I do really think that I read a lot more poetry this year. I had I think I read like one collection last year and this year I probably read more than five. Short stories, not so much. <laughs> they may not be for me. I've checked out short story collections from the library and they just haven't pulled me in and yeah, we'll see. Number four was to do more buddy reads. I definitely did that this year. I kicked it off really badly. At the beginning of the year, I was not reading with anybody. I was just reading by myself, basically. And towards the end of the year, I read a lot of stuff with other people here on booktube and beyond. I read Lincoln and the Bardo. I read Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. I read I Can't Breathe. I read Human Acts. All in really quick succession too which is really silly but um, it just worked out better in the at the end of the year for me to read with other people. Number five was to keep doing readathons. I did not do that many readathons this year and I really think my love for readathons in 2016 had a lot to do with not being in school and having a nine to five job and readathons really felt like a great way to like do things, have tasks for myself. And with school this year, it's just a little bit more difficult balancing school work and then also trying to balance a readathon. So I participated in the autumn readathon by um, Mercedes and the booktubeathon, of course, with Ariel Bissett. Number six was to read at least three classics. <laughs> And this is where I failed. I only read one classic and it was a modern classic so it wasn't even like an old school one and that was Rebecca and everything else was a failure. I read one of three. Is that good enough? Number seven, my last goal was to read at least 10 books that I own. I think I read like three or four so I didn't really get there. Regardless, I didn't really take in that many books and I didn't really haul that many books and right before I moved to Colorado I got rid of a bunch too. It's all right that I didn't read 10 books that I own. As for Modern Mrs. Darcy, that was my reading challenge that I selected to do this year and I think I missed from Modern Mrs. Darcy about four of them and I completed the other like 19 or 20. So I did okay there. There was just some, especially at the end of the year where I was not about it, I didn't care anymore, and I didn't push myself to complete it. Last year I did Read Harder Challenge and I did complete all of the challenges, which was fun. This year it didn't happen, whatever. So as for 2018, let's look forward to what goals I'm setting for myself for 2018. I feel like from all the videos that I have watched of other people on booktube, we are all taking it easy next year. I don't know why that is, uh, if it's like just the, the culture right now on booktube or if it's the political climate or if it's everybody has jobs and school and don't have time for setting themselves very strict goals or are starting to realize that all the goals we set for ourselves and what we want to do we never really accomplish. Yeah, I'm taking it easy with everybody else. So I'm going with the same Goodreads goal as last year. I'm reading 52 books and that for me is more than doable. I've read more than twice that this year so like I feel really safe putting 52 just one a week and that's a good marker for me um, as to how my reading is going. I am not making a TBR book list for this upcoming year of books that I want to read in 2018 because that did not work for me in 2017. I think I read seven or eight of the 15 from that list and so half for me is not that good of a track record. I'm just not going to bother with that. If I want to make TBRs I'll just make them shorter span rather than in a whole year because what you're excited for in January is not necessarily what you're going to be excited for in September. Those are two and then the rest are in this little sheet of paper that I did at work. I'm going to make it a point to try to read more books published before 2010 and you'll see this in my stats too I think because I really do feel like I've read 
a lot of new releases this year. And that's really fun, but I do want to get to some older books. I want to read more children's books, and I'm going to be taking two classes this upcoming semester that are focused more on children's literature. In the job that I'm in right now, I work primarily in the youth services department. I want to be better versed in those things, so when I get questions, I just want to have more of an idea of where to guide people and parents. I also want to try more popular slash commercial books. Not necessarily saying I'm not going to read literary fiction because I do love literary fiction, but I want to try like the books that are New York Times bestselling that we put facing out on our displays. Every time that we put them up, people just walk away with them automatically. And I just want to try them. I want to see what the fuss is about. Why do they like it so much? For all I know, I might really, really enjoy them. I'm thinking of like, Debbie McComer, David Baldacci, Jay Jantz, Louise Penny, people like that. And I also want to participate in the reading challenge that my library system is doing. It's only 12 challenges and they're really fun. I'll read them out loud so you can get an idea of the things that we're trying to accomplish there. Alright, so it's a book by an author whose last name starts with a B, a book about or set in Africa, a book with a red cover, a travel memoir, a book that has been on your to-read list for too long, a biography or autobiography, listen to an audiobook, a young adult title, a book published this year, so in 2018, a book of poetry, a book from the Dewey range 600 to 699, and a mystery. I think those all sound really doable for me and fun and I want to participate in something that my library is doing too. So that's it for my 2017 goals, how did I do, and what I want to do in 2018. So now we can move on to stats, the really fun part, how I did this year, what I think about that, comparing some of the stats to 2016 as well. All right, I got some semblance of order. <laughs> so let's start with genre. Genre, I found that I did very similar as I did last year, and that, that was pretty fascinating for me. So in 2016, my most, you know, read genres were memoirs, social issues, and I think the only one that was kind of strange was fantasy. I read a lot of fantasy in 2016, and I don't usually do that. Um, this past year, 2017, I mostly read, again, coming of age, again, um, memoir and nonfiction. I separated nonfiction, I separated memoir, and I separated nonfiction social issues from each other just to see how much social issues related books I read, um, and I do read a lot. So that was pretty fascinating for me to see that. One thing that really made me happy seeing these stats is the poetry stat. I read 5.3% poetry this year, and last year I think it was at like 0.9% or something like that. So I was really happy because like I showed you in my 2017 goals, that was something that I really wanted to do. Um, short story, I failed that as you can see, but poetry did, I did fine. These numbers look good to me. I'm happy with them. We all know that I read a lot of nonfiction and we all know that I love coming of age stories. As for age group, let's do age group next. Age group in 2016, I separated them into three categories and this year I separated them into four. So in 2016, I read, of course, mostly adults, 63%, more YA than I anticipated at 22%. While this year, I read about the same middle grade, I read less YA, almost 19%, and I read more adult. After that, we can go to star ratings. So we can look at my Goodreads star ratings first. My average rating for 2017 according to Goodreads is 3.4, but we all know Goodreads does not let you put your half stars. So Goodreads, you need to get on that. Therefore, looking at mine star ratings, I do do it by half stars. The majority of my books were four stars, and then the next was three stars. I feel like my catch-all rating is 3.5, so there's a lot of 3.5s in there, and I did not rate anything one star, and I, I have difficulty rating things one star, because if I hate it that much, I would probably DNF it, and I don't rate my DNFs. Not a lot of five stars, but a lot of 4.5s, almost there, 4.5s. I thought that that looked good. I read mostly great things this year, in my opinion. Let's look at the Goodreads most popular, least popular things. The most popular book that I read was all the way at the end of the year when I read Big Little Lies. 719,000 other people read it with me this year, and the least popular was a poetry collection called Indivisible, and it's poems about social justice. All right, so moving on to page count. Goodreads said, that I read 31,248 pages, so that 
that's pretty good. 31,000 is a lot of pages. My average length is 250 pages. We all know I like short books. Books that keep my attention and deliver quickly because I do not have it in me to read really, really long books these days. As for the books read per month, for me, you can definitely see that January, February, and March, the beginning months were really bad for me. That really changed later on in the year. I think it had a lot to do with the incoming president and um, also just the new school year probably. And you can also see a dip in December. I did not read that much this past month. I really took it easy and I just relaxed and watched a lot of television. And you can see the months that I did the best at were definitely the fall months, September, October, November. November, thank you, nonfiction November. You will also see that in the page count. So pages read per month. Sorry, January, February, March, even April. That was not good. Um, August was me acclimating to moving to Colorado. And you can see the page count just jump in October and November. And again, thank you, nonfiction November. I read so much in November, it was great. Physical versus digital, that's fun for me. Definitely, I read a lot of books digitally this year and that's mostly audiobooks, but I did read some in ebook. But yeah, I will continue to read physical books as you can see. The next thing we can look at is also super fun and <laughs> I won't lie, I kind of messed with it at the end of the year so that it would remain at these percentages. My nonfiction and fiction. This is so fun because looking at my fiction and nonfiction from last year, it's almost 70% fiction and 30% nonfiction. And I thought that was fantastic. But this year I blew it out of the water and read 50-50. And I'm really happy about that and I want to continue that into the new year. So let's move on to type. You know, what kind of book is it? So the majority of things I read, nonfiction. And I also read a lot of graphic traits, so a lot of graphic novels and picture kind of books. Then after that would be novels. I read 21%. And next we can go to format. So format is how I consumed it. The majority of them were on hardcover and I think that has to do with how many new releases and relatively new books I read. And then after that was audio. I listened to a lot of audiobooks this year. Next we can go to protagonist gender. These are not surprising to me. I read mostly books about women and I love it. <laughs> and also author gender is the same. I read mostly female authors, 60% almost, and about one third were male. Not something that I want to change. I'm good with that. The country thing is one that is, I think you can expect that as well. I read a lot of things about the United States. About 70% of my reading is about the United States. I don't know about this. I honestly don't have a problem with it. I can see how I can come across like I'm very, you know, single-minded and I only have one thing in my view, the United States. But it is my country and I want to learn more about my country. And then year publish. And this is, you're gonna see with my 2018 goals that I said that I wanted to read books published before 2010. Here is the reason why. Most of the things that I read were from 2016 to 2017. And you know, I read less than 10 books published in the 2000s, like a tiny amount in the 90s. I don't know, this I can't explain. Do I get excited by new releases? Yes, I do. I've read almost 40 2017 releases. I'm gonna keep up with the new releases because I find that fun, but I do want to read more in the backlist. That is it for my stats and my goals and how I did. I have not filmed like any of my favorite books of the year videos and that will be next but I wanted to get started with this. These are some of my favorite. I love watching like stats and like graphs and seeing how everything broke down. So I hope that you enjoyed how my reading data breakdown ended up being and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.